This lecture is about conditional operation inside a C program. So uh, if you have a program with no conditionals, that's unusual, but you can have a program with no conditionals where it just executes line after line. But a lot of the time, most of the time in programs, you want to have conditionals where you execute some code under some conditions and execute other code under other conditions. So that's what we're talking about here, how you implement conditionals in inside C. So uh, the main conditional statement is going to be an if statement. And uh, we're showing two forms of an if statement right here. Uh, right, let's take the one on the left. If expression is true, then execute statement one, else execute statement two. So you notice after the word if, there's an expression in parentheses. That expression is evaluated at runtime. If it turns out to be true, then statement one is executed, else statement two is executed. And note that you don't have to have a statement two. You could just say if expression statement one and leave it at that, no else. And then if the expression is true, it executes statement one. If, if it's not true, it executes nothing. It just moves on to the next statement. So on the other side, you got uh, if and then an else if. This is an extension. Uh, so this is sort of a chain, a series of if statements. So you can say if expression one, then execute statement one. Else, if expression two, execute statement two. And you can continue this, right? You can say if, else if expression three, execute statement three, and so on. You can continue that as long as you want. And at the end, you typically put an else statement, else statement three, or in this case, statement three. So what happens is, first it checks expression one. If that's true, then it executes statement one, and it's done with the entire if statement. If, it, if that's not true, then it goes to the next expression and checks it. And then if that's not true, it goes to the next. So it goes down the list of expressions until it hits one that's true. As soon as it hits one that's, tr one that's true, it executes the appropriate statement, and then it, executes, it exits the, uh, the if statement. And if all else fails, it hits the else at the end, which, by the way, the else is optional. You could just leave out the else if you wanted to. So those are two forms of if statements, if and else if also. Uh, here's an example, a conditional example. We've got a main. Uh, it's, so we declare an integer x, and we set it equal to 1, which we can do on the same line, int x equal 1. Then if x is equal to 1, which it is, uh, printf correct, else printf incorrect. So that's a typical if statement. Now one thing to note about this if statement is that, uh, so statement 1 and statement 2. Statement 1 we'll call printf correct, else uh, statement 2 is printf incorrect. These two statements, they are single statements, right? So if x is equal to 1, we're executing, in this case, only one statement. But uh, you could execute many. There's, there are many cases where you might say, look, if x is equal to 1, I want to do 10 statements, something like that. To do that, you can, you can do that, but you've got to use curly brackets to group the statements. So notice here, uh, there are no curly brackets. There's a curly bracket that defines main, one at the top, one at the bottom. But there are no curly brackets inside the if statement. But if I wanted to have multiple uh, statements executed, if x is equal to 1, then I would put curly brackets there. So I'd say if x equals 1, then I have an open curly bracket, then I have as many statements as I wanted, then I have a closed curly bracket. And then I could say else, printf incorrect. Okay? So uh, you can have many statements executed on the true or false sides of that, that if statement, if, as long as you group them in curly brackets. Now switch, it's another type of uh, conditional branch statement. And uh, what is useful in a lot of cases, what it does is it uh, basically takes a variable, some expression, and uh, the expression is evaluated. So you switch against some expression. The expression in parentheses is evaluated, and it's compared to a set of constant expressions. So a common way to do this is, um, say you got a variable x, right? And you know it's going to equal either 0, 1, 2, or 3. And under each condition, you want to do a different thing. So you'll say, you could say switch uh, x. The expression would be x itself. And then you'd say case 0, statement whatever, statement 1, case 1, case 2, and so the, K, the constant expression, case 0, case 1, case 2, that's compared to whatever the expression is. Okay? And if it matches, if, if the expression evaluates to 0 and you have a case 0, then statement 1 is executed. If you have a case 1, then the expression matches that, then statement 2 is executed, and so on. And default is, the, is optional. It's the default. If nothing matches, you execute the default. It's like the else at the end of an if statement, of an if-else if statement, right? Actually, a switch is an alternative to using ifs and else ifs. If-else if-else if is an alternative way to, to do this. So uh, here's an example of a switch. And you have to use these, uh, it's important to use these break statements in the switch, but I'll talk about that in a second. So let's say I have my switch, switch x. x is my expression. 
Notice there are three cases, case 0, case 1, case 2. And what will happen is x is going to be first matched compared to 0. If it matches, then it executes that statement y equals 1. And, but if it doesn't match that, then x is going to be compared to case 1. Uh, and then it's going to be compared to 2, so compared to 0, 1, 2. Now one thing about a switch, though, that's a little bit annoying, frankly, is that <clears throat> it, uh, so it does what I said. It, it'll start off, it'll take x compared to 0, right? Now if x doesn't match 0, then it'll go to the next case and try case comparing x to 1. But if x does match 0, it'll, it'll execute every statement from that point on. So that means, in the, the way that this is written, it'll, when x is, um, if x is equal to 0, it'll say, is, it'll say case 0, it'll match that case, it'll assign y equal to 1. But then notice it'll, it'll continue execution. It will go on to the next statement, y equal 2, and execute that also. Okay? Very weird and annoying thing about uh, switches in C. Because usually that's not what you want. Usually you want these cases to be mutually exclusive, meaning if x is equal to 0, you execute case 0, and that's that. If x is equal to 1, you execute case 1, that's that. You'd like them to be separate, but that's not how C is. So in order to make it that way, which is a very common thing people want to do, you use a break statement. Now I put 1 in there. Normally I would put one break statement in every case, but in this case I put 1 in there. So let's say, uh, if you look at case 1, let's say x is equal to 1. So x matches case 1, so it, uh, the next statement is y equals 2. So it executes that y equals 2 statement. Then after that there's a break. What a break does in a, in a switch is it says stop right now and do not execute anything else after this line. And it jumps out of the case. So out of the switch statement altogether. So what will happen is if x is equal to 1, it'll execute y equals 2, it'll hit the break, and it won't reach that case 2. It'll just skip straight to the end of the switch. So it is very common in a switch statement, if you have three cases like this, case 0, case 1, case 2, you put three breaks. You put a break at the end of case 0, a break at the end of case 1, and a break at the end of case 2. Actually, case 2, you don't technically need a break since it's at the end already, all right? So you'd put a break at the end of case 0 and case 1. That's a very common way to use a break inside a switch. So be wary of switches when you use them because if you don't use the break, then, you know, if, if x matches 0, case 0, then it'll also execute case 1 as if it matched that too. And that can be confusing sometimes. Sometimes that's what you want, but just be aware. Thank you. Thank you.